This ain't a book for your fragile senses. No second chance for Earth's offensives. But how we gonna fight this demon in the fleet? You're gonna hear it scream when I'm dreaming out loud. Hi, I'm Michael Everts, and this is Fit to be Red. <laughs> Stars and Bones is a 2022 new release by author Gareth Powell. This is space opera with a bit of military science fiction and moments of vivid horror. My previous experience with this author was his excellent Embers of War series. I enjoyed all three books of that series and I ranked it on my top 210 science fiction books video. Stars and Bones is a fast read and while I prefer Powell's Embers of War, I believe Stars and Bones will be a satisfying book for those who are looking for a fast-paced space opera that leans heavy into the vivid depictions of the gory aftermath of alien conflict. I recommend Stars and Bones as the type of science fiction that you read between very heavy reads, like when you feel like spending time in space among starships, but you don't want to have to work out what deeper things are going on or learn to understand some new complicated technology. I recommend this book for its fast pace and its consistent action. I recommend this for the reader, as I sort of touched on already, that digs it when an author can dip down into the very gory and the very graphic. This book doesn't do that a lot, but Powell does go all in on that at the beginning of the book, and he dabbles in it a few more times throughout the read. There are some Expanse vibes in this one, and I think that it's appropriate to recommend this to fans of that first book in the series, Leviathan Wakes. Because the book also presents sentient spaceships, it could also be a good fit for fans of Anne Leckie's Ancillary Justice. As with each review on this channel, the episode will begin with a spoiler-free review to introduce you to the novel. Following the summary, I'll announce a five likes and five dislikes segment to share some additional thoughts about moments that stood out for me on this novel. If there are any spoilery items, I'll save those for the very end, and I'll give you fair warning. Engage with me in the comment section and let me know if you've read this novel, or if based on the spoiler-free introduction, you think you might pick it up. Published in 2022, Stars and Bones presents humanity fleeing, or perhaps more accurately, evacuated, or even more accurately, evicted from the Earth. Humans drift the heavenly seas of space in colossal arc ships. It's safe to say that humans really shouldn't be trusted with the Earth anymore. We're always just on the brink of nuclear holocaust, and it's as if one action or even one wrong word could trigger such an annihilation. Maybe we should just be left to our own devices and face our inevitable destruction by our own hands. That might be doing a favor to the rest of the universe and whoever or whatever occupies it. Because one individual, Frank Tucker, has shown some promising potential through his revolutionary work with wormholes and a major discovery therein, a powerful alien entity, the Benevolence Rajin, decided the race should be given another chance. Everyone can thank Frank for humanity's current predicament, life on the arc ships, heading to who knows where. Where the story shines is the world building. The Benevolence has provided humanity with 10,000 arc ships. These ships feel like Star Trek's USS Enterprise times a thousand. Each ship holds millions upon millions of citizens. The ship is their home. There are parks, plazas, lakes, and who knows, maybe even holodecks. Pretty much anything that you need is taken care of. These arcs left the Earth 75 years ago, and it's the only home that most people have ever known. Also on the arcs are the envoys. Because the arcs are sentient, they have a, in most cases, human form avatar. The avatar envoys can physically interact with their environment while simultaneously monitoring and managing every aspect of the arc ship's operations. Enriching the world building are glimpses that we get of different arcs in the continuance. Without spoiling anything, I'll just say that some arcs differ greatly in personality, appearance, environment, and culture. Where the Leviathan Wakes vibes come in are the parallels to that book's alien protomolecule affecting and transforming inhabitants of populated worlds. In Stars and Bones, it's an alien force that's awakened, confronted, or discovered that attacks scout ships of the Continuance and eventually the Ark ships. Here we get the gory and the graphic. The alien force has the power to reach into these ships and infiltrate, affect, and transform the humans that it contacts or attacks. Its ability to rapidly infiltrate and assimilate is significant. Humans don't stand a chance, at least not alone. Worthy of mention is the main protagonist, Aaron. Aaron is a navigator on a little scout ship, the Furious Ocelot. 
While I feel her character has a lot of room to develop and grow over the course of a series, we get to know some of her foundation. She's reluctant towards romance and she's been burned before. She's a bit of a cynic, but she's also a bit of a badass. She's relatively insignificant in the initial larger picture, but circumstances will thrust her into a significant role she will need to rise to and meet. Will she crumble under the pressure or will she embrace her role and face her destiny? opposite the alien scourge. Embrace now, still spoiler free, my five likes and dislikes for Gareth Powell's fit to be read, Stars and Boons. Like number one, Powell's imagination of life on the Ark ships and the lengths to which Frank Tucker and others in his life will go to hide him and themselves dislike number one. There are too many familiar names, the Tchaikovsky vessel, Captain King, Kovacs, maybe in a few decades, but not now, it feels too recent. Yes, it makes sense because this is the future. I said what I said. All right, so here's now the point where I'm gonna get into spoilers. If you haven't read the book and you do want to avoid spoilers, thank you for watching. Please come back. Dislike number two. On the Dyson Spherish planet, it feels slightly off that they're hiking up to the angel or exerting any effort to reach it. Rather than the angel being obviously aware of Aaron and her crew's presence and arranging the interaction instantaneously. It seems trekking would be an unnecessary thing and it just feels too much in service to the adventure nature of the story. Speaking of the sphere, I definitely give Stars and Bones points for imaginative world building, especially letting me see a bit of the uniqueness in the arc ships. I have to dock a few points, however, as the story presents these things like Dyson spheres and a substrate without getting much deeper than only mentioning their existence and maybe a broad definition. Like number two, it's clear to me who this author is and what he likes in his science fiction. The spectacle of science fiction is a priority. The ships, what they look like, what they can do, the formation, what other things of interest are there in space that the characters occupy. I appreciate this clarity. Like number three, the story definitely recalls elements of the Expanse series while still being very unique from that experience. I think it did some things better and Leviathan Wakes did some things better. Like number four, while the plot calls for comparisons to the Expanse series and Adrian Tchaikovsky's Final Architect series, tough measures to live up to, there is enough to look at this first novel of a planned series and consider that a foundation has been set that sequels might improve upon. Dislike number three, Frank Tucker tells Victoria of Aaron's meeting with the angel and offers to send the recording to her bracelet receiver. She declines and shakes her head. I can't get past it as it doesn't seem possible that Victoria would derelict her duty by ignoring the message from the angel that relates to defeating the enemy that threatens humanity. She's cool with up until recently missing in action Tucker and scout ship navigator King deciphering the message as they see fit. She has very little recent history or interaction with these two characters and this scene glosses over that just doesn't work for me. Dislike number four, usually when battling the manifestations of the baby angel enemy, the humans were able to shoot it and burn it effectively. At the end of the book, when it was breaching the hull of the ship to attack Madison and Lee, the only thing that could affect it was the extreme heat of the sun or the edge of a black hole. I had difficulty with this inconsistency. Dislike number five, the action in the last 40 pages of the book dipped in and out of being really exciting. Unfortunately for me, the ending felt abrupt and anticlimactic, all at once there seems to be an understanding that Aaron has a dream power and it's from Regine, the savior angel, and boom, the enemy is defeated just like that. I was expecting much more prose to be wrapped around all of that. Also, on top of all the sudden resolution stuff, the cat was somehow back in the picture to help out and the baby angel turns into a little girl again and needs Aaron to stay behind to sort of mentor her. All of this falls into our lap as the book closes out. Like number five, toward the end of the book, Powell has Lee and Aaron discussing the illusory continuity of existence and the relevance of physical body as a vessel for consciousness. Acknowledging that the story is meant to be more fun in action, it's worth noting that this stood out as a deep thought moment. I always love when a book makes me think deeply about existence. Thank you for watching. I'm Michael Everts, and this is Fit to be Read.